All right, uh, welcome back to another lightning review video. This is a companion video for lecture three. And in this video, we're going to talk about the intuition behind the statement of and the proof of the pumping lemma. Um, now, you might be tempted to fast forward to the statement, but I think the intuition here is really important. In particular, the pumping lemma, famously, the statement looks like a bunch of nested quantifier garbage, unless you understand the underlying intuition. And if you understand the underlying intuition, you'll know what you're really trying to prove and why, and using it will be that much easier. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to draw a DFA, D, and I'm going to specify that the language of D is regular and infinite. So um, here's D, it's a DFA. It's got, got a bunch of states. Maybe it's got a couple accept states. It's definitely got a bunch of transitions between states. Um, and I specify that the language D recognizes is regular and infinite, which means there's also, I can pick a string that's as long as I want because if all the strings are shorter than some value, well, it can't possibly be infinite. So what I'll do is I'll pick a string W in this language such that the length of the string is greater than or equal to the number of states in my DFA. And I'm going to draw the path of, oops, I'm going to draw the path of the computation of D on W in purple. So we're going to start at the start state. And as we read in characters of W, we're going to go from state to state to state to state. Um, and then, you know, at some point, we'll end up at an accept state because by assumption, W is in the language. Now, here's the important thing to realize. That computation takes at least Q steps, right? One step for the length of W, which means we've got to touch at least Q plus one states. And if we touch Q plus one states, we have to have touched some state twice. In particular, here there's actually a couple. There has to be at least one loop, right? So that's our intuitional grounding for the pumping lemma. Um, and this will give us our intuitive grounding. So if I was gonna state the pumping lemma informally, I would say um, if D, I'll call it D sub A, is the DFA for some infinite regular language A, then sufficiently long strings um, W in this language that DA recognizes. Oh, I suppose I've called that language A, haven't I? Sufficiently long strings W and A make loops, right? This is what we've just proved by picture. Give me some DFA for an infinite regular language. By definition, my DFA is finite. It's right there in the name. That's the F. Um, but if my DFA is recognizing an infinite number of strings, some of the really long ones must have computations that go on longer for more steps than the number of states in my box. So I've got to repeat a state. I've got to have a loop. And that's what the pumping lemma is really saying. Um, if DFA is for infinite regular languages, um, except sufficiently long strings, those long strings have to make loops. And I'll also say, moreover, we can, we can repeat the loop to get 
more strings in the language. So uh, the logic behind that is just, if I go from start to accept, and at some point I make a loop, like say I go from stem state L back to some state L, there's no reason I have to take that loop once. If I repeat the string that took me from L to L, well then I'll go around the loop again. If I repeat it 10 times, I'll go around the loop 10 times. If I repeat it zero times, I'll still go from start to accept, but at L, I won't take the choice, I won't take the route that led me around the loop. I'll just go straight to the finish. So what this is, is an observation about regular languages. We're saying all infinite regular languages have this property. And the reason why the pumping lemma will be useful to us is now we'll be able to say, all regular languages have this property. So if you don't have this property, you must not be a regular language. Now, um, let me go from the informal statement and write this down formally. So here's the formal statement of the pumping lemma. So let A be a regular language. Um, then there is some number P such that all strings S in the language with the length of S being at least P can be divided into three parts. Um, I guess I'll leave our informal definition up. S can be divided into the first part X, the second part Y, and the third part Z. And if I were to annotate these parts, I'd say the first part is before the loop. The second part is the part of the string that takes us around the loop. And the third part is after the loop. Um, and these parts are going to satisfy conditions of loopiness. So they'll satisfy the following three conditions. First condition, x, y, i to the z is in the language for all i greater than or equal to zero. What does that mean? It means can go around loop as much as we want. So if we got from the start to the finish on the string x, y, z, and y took us around the loop, well then going around y twice will also get us from the start to the finish. Going around y 10 times or zero times will get us from the start to the finish. So that's our first loopiness condition. Our second loopiness condition, uh, y is greater than zero. So that just means, um, non-trivial loop. It's not much of a loop if there are no characters in it. Note that even if there's one character, we go from a state back to itself. That's what it'll mean if we have a one character loop. That's still a perfectly fine loop. We can go around it as many times as we like. And third, um, we have x, y is less than p. And what this will mean in practice is we find a loop before or as we touch uh, q plus one states. So uh, x, y less than p. p is going to, you can essentially think of p as being the number of states in our DFA. Uh, and condition three of loopiness just says if we're wandering along the execution of our long accepting string, um, certainly by the time we've seen Q plus one states, we've seen some state twice. So 
That's our pumping lemma. Um, and if you've got it, great. If not, I'm going to jot down a little intuitive proof of this by picture. going to be very similar to our intuition. Um, so here is our DFA. Uh, we'll say, consider a DFA D with Q states. So I'm just writing bar Q bar. I'm saying the size of the state set Q. Um, you might have noticed that when I wrote out the formal definition of the pumping lemma, I specified it for all regular languages instead of just the infinite ones. And the reason is that the pumping lemma is trivial. It's vacuous if we consider finite regular languages. Why? Well, give me a finite regular language then I'll say my number P is P longer than the length of the longest string. I mean, certainly any strings that are bigger than any string accepted by the DFA have this property because there are none of them. The statement is empty. Strings longer than P is an empty set. So we're, we've got the pumping lemma trivially for finite regular languages. That's why we're mostly focused on infinite regular languages. Um, and I will set my pumping link P to be Q. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to draw my path through the DFA like this. So on some string S, we'll follow the purple path and then the green path and then the blue path to get to our end state. So in particular, we will pick S in our language with the length of S being greater than or equal to P, uh, which we've set to be Q. Um, and we'll say, We'll use the path above as a pictorial reference for the evaluation of our DFA on S. So now consider our path. Because S is greater than or equal to Q, that means we'll take at least Q transitions and Q transitions are going to have to touch Q plus one states. Um, we repeat a state somewhere. Uh, we'll let uh, QL be the first repeated state. So in our picture, this little green dot is going to be the state we call QL. And now it's possible that actually I have multiple loops or loops within loops. Um, but it's certainly valid for me to say there's some state that I repeat first. If I look at the state sequence of D evaluated on S. Uh, there's got to be some state that I see twice for the first time. Um, and we'll call um, the evaluation before QL, so the part of the string S that gets us to QL, uh, we'll call Y the loop. So this is the characters that take us from QL to QL, and uh, finally Z is the part of S after 
the loop. And note that just by defining these things, I haven't necessarily said that they're not the empty string. So maybe the first state I see twice is the start state. In that case, X would be the empty string. That's totally fine. Um, and now I'm gonna argue that we meet each of these three conditions. So now I claim X, Y, I, Z is in the language for i greater than or equal to zero. And to see this, we can look at our picture and say, well, xz is in our language because x will take us to ql and z will take us to the end state from ql. Uh, moreover, I can go around my loop as many times as I want. Every time I insert that little substring, it'll take me from ql around the loop to ql because we've got determinism going on. Um, second condition, y greater than zero. That's also trivial. By assumption, we saw QL twice, which means there has to be at least one edge in between the first time we saw it and the second time we saw it. Um, and third, uh, we have XY is less than P. So um, how long is XY? Well, XY is all the characters it took to get us from the start state to the second time we saw QL. Um, and as we've previously observed, if we take at most Q transitions, we see Q plus one states. So we have to see our first duplicated state QL uh, at least by the time we've taken Q transitions. So all three conditions hold, and that is our proof by picture of the pumping lemma. Uh, if you'd like to see the formal proof, well, in my mind, this is a formal proof. Um, but if you'd like to see it written out in a slightly different way, go back and check out Sipser pages 77 to 79. Uh, thanks for watching the video. If you want examples of how to use the pumping language lemma to prove that strings are, sorry, to prove that languages are non-regular, go forward to the next example video in the sequence. Thanks for watching. See you in class.